With tensions between the US and Russia, the relentless advances of commercial space companies like Axiom and SpaceX, and NASA looking to send people beyond low Earth orbit, the future for the International Space Station is less than secure. In fact, in its current guise, the old orbital workhorse will be plunged into the Earth's atmosphere to burn up in less than 10 years. If we're lucky, none of the debris will land on populated areas. The International Space Station has been an ever-present orbital outpost above our heads since the Zarya and Unity modules were launched and docked in 1998. There have been 36 space shuttle missions at roughly half a billion dollars per mission to put most of the modules, power and life support systems in place. For the last decade, it's been so big that it reflects enough sunlight to appear like a really bright star as it goes overhead. In fact, you can go to NASA's Spot the Station website in the show notes below, or use any number of apps to find out when it's going to pass over your head. It's a really impressive sight, and many an amateur astrophotographer routinely take pictures of it using backyard telescopes and a camera. So let me know in the comments below if you've gone out and seen the ISS yourself. I think it's a great spectacle. But its days are numbered, somewhat like the great red spot on Jupiter that appears to be slowly disappearing. Our descendants won't have this wonder of the night sky to enjoy. We're fortunate to be here to see the ISS pass overhead. But what goes up? Well, you know the rest. NASA and the Russian Space Agency have had plans to dispose of the space station since its very launch. The Outer Space Treaty makes the US and Russia responsible for its safe disposal. But a 490 ton spaceship the size of a football field carrying fuel and containing toxic metals isn't an easy thing to dispose of. That leftover fuel and toxic mix will be absorbed into the atmosphere not enough to make a difference in the greater scheme of things, but 16% of the ISS is expected to survive the re-entry burn, landing somewhere between 25 and 86 tonnes of material, hopefully in small chunks, hopefully in the Pacific, hopefully away from shipping. Not a guaranteed thing by any means, Australia often cops a load of space debris intended for a safe plop in the Pacific Ocean. Even as recently as July 2022 from a SpaceX Dragon capsule. And on top of that, a controlled re-entry of the ISS will take months to execute and cost about a billion dollars. So there have been quite a few plans since the beginning of this century. One of the most ambitious, actually, from 2011, proposed pushing some of the Russian hardware out to one of the Earth-Moon Lagrange points to use as a refueling depot and service station. But NASA have kept pushing the end date of the ISS past the initial 2020 timeframe. In 2015, Boeing, who are NASA's prime contractor for the ISS, had their contract extended to the end of 2028. Then in 2018, the leading Human Spaceflight Act extended ISS operations to 2030. And in January 2022, NASA announced a planned date of January 2031 to deorbit the aging space station and close out the $4 billion annual cost of running the ISS. In between now and 2031 though, Russia and the other ISS inhabiting nations have a rather tense working environment up in orbit since the outbreak of the war in Ukraine, just as they do down here. And who knows how that dynamic will improve or deteriorate in the coming months and years. Well, one thing we do know is that the new head of the Russian space agency, Roscosmos, has now floated the plan to withdraw Russia from the International Space Station in 2024. But regardless of Russia's involvement in the ISS, NASA also have some really ambitious plans for it in the next decade and have already awarded contracts to a few commercial spaceflight companies who will make the most of the ISS while it's still there. This is all in the name of improving commercial space's chances of becoming self-sufficient 
once the ISS is no longer around. NASA want to go deeper into space, leaving the new commercial spaceflight companies to provide them with access to low Earth orbit at a fraction of the cost that it usually takes NASA to get people into space. There are already more and more commercial science experiments being hosted on the space station and a whole host of companies hoping to use the ISS as a springboard for their own commercial space stations to replace it with something new, modern and profitable. Defence giant Northrop Grumman have already signed a contract with NASA to design a safe, reliable and cost-effective commercial free-flying space station in low Earth orbit based on its Cygnus cargo resupply spacecraft technology. The company NanoRacks plans a space station called Starlab for commercial research by 2027. Jeff Bezos as Blue Origin are planning the Orbital Reef Space Station to operate as a mixed-use business park for up to 10 people, if you can believe such a thing, with an orbital business incubator. And Axiom Space have already done a recce of the ISS on a commercial SpaceX trip there and are now building modules to attach to the space station as early as 2024. After a few of these modules have been deployed as orbiting hotels, they will eventually detach from the ISS and remain as self-contained holiday destinations for paying space tourists while and after the ISS has been deorbited. Where's Elon Musk in all this, I hear you cry? Well, he couldn't give a flying f about low Earth orbit. He wants to get NASA astronauts to the moon and hundreds of intrepid explorers to Mars to make human life interplanetary. But if NASA or anyone else wants to pay SpaceX to take people or cargo to low Earth orbit on a Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy or Starship, he'll gladly take their money. So once the clock has run out on the ISS and hopefully all these companies have become self-sufficient, the current plan to dispose of the ISS will kick into gear. Three Russian Progress supply spacecraft will dock with the space station and use their thrusters to slow it enough to begin deorbiting, while the spacecraft will only burn their engines for a few minutes and might actually need American Cygnus cargo ships to help out, the whole deorbit operation will likely play out over many months. During this phase, there will actually be crew aboard the station for the first few months of this deorbit operation, but once everything is performing as intended, the crew will leave the station to the automated procedures and come back home on Soyuz or SpaceX Dragon capsules. Controllers on the ground will then monitor the station's descent into the Earth's atmosphere to burn up as much as possible and allow the remaining hardware to fall in a remote part of the Pacific Ocean called Point Nemo in the South Pacific Oceanic Uninhabited Area. This is a really deep and remote section of the Pacific between Chile and New Zealand and as far away from land as anyone can be on Earth. There are actually hundreds of spacecraft already decaying on the ocean bed here and the Russians have a pretty good track record of doing this kind of operation as Point Nemo is also the resting place of their first space station, Mir. So, while the thumbnail for this video might seem hyperbolic, this is the current plan for the end of the ISS, unless a new plan comes along, a plan that seems less and less likely every year. It will be deorbited to mostly burn up in the atmosphere and rain down the remaining fragments in the Pacific Ocean, if all goes well. But tell us what you think. Should we extend the ISS? Is it right that orbital space becomes a playground for the rich? Is this the long-awaited birth of access to space for everyone? I read every comment, so do drop your comments below. Hit the like button to say thanks, and consider subscribing for more space content from us. And speaking of more space content from us, take a look at these videos that I know you're going to love if you've made it all the way to the end of this one.